Hey there, my name is Chris and I'm a junior scientist here at BioBus. Welcome to this Explore at Home challenge. Today we'll be talking about phylogenetic trees. There are so many different living things out there in the world. Birds, plants, bacteria, humans. How can we tell which are more closely related to each other? Well, for hundreds of years, scientists have used this tool called a phylogenetic tree. It's used to make hypotheses on the relationships between different organisms, also known as living things. Like most trees, phylogenetic trees have branches and branching points. Each branch represents a different organism, and each branching point represents when organisms evolved or started becoming different from each other. You can also think of phylogenetic trees as similar to family trees. The closer the branching point between two or more branches are, the more closely related the organisms at these branches are. The branching point of me and my sister is closer than the branching point of me and my grandma. This makes a lot of sense. Me and my sister are much more closely related than me and my grandma. This is also how scientists breed and make their own phylogenetic trees. Now that you know what a phylogenetic tree is, let's make one together. Step one, pick three organisms that you'd like to use. I'll be picking a cat, a dog, and a lizard. Step two is to observe or think about what your organisms have in common. Cats and dogs both have hair. Lizards have scales. Cats and dogs also have what scientists call mammary glands. These are used to give milk to their babies. Lizards don't have mammary glands. Lizards lay eggs. Cats and dogs don't. Lizards are cold-blooded. Cats and dogs are warm-blooded. For a list of more traits to think about or observe, check out the resource guide that we've provided with this video. Now that we've observed and thought about what our organisms have in common, we're now ready for step three, to build our tree. From my list, I can see that lizards seem to be the more unique animal between the three. Lizards don't share as many things in common with cats and dogs. This means that lizards are probably not as closely related to these other two. So, we will put the lizard in the first branch. We are now left with two organisms. Where does each one go? Well, they only have one branching point left, so no matter where we put them, the relationship will still be the same. This means we can put them in either branch. And that's it! We're now done, and we've made our own phylogenetic tree. The tree we made only has three living things on it, but scientists can make trees with as many organisms as they want. However, when you keep adding more and more and more branches, it can be kind of tricky to figure out where each organism goes. There are a lot of discoveries that have been made in the past couple hundreds of years that scientists now use to make better trees. Scientists can now compare DNA sequences between different living things to make more accurate trees. Because of this, some trees we make may not exactly match up to what we find online. And that's okay! It just means that science is constantly evolving. Now it's your turn. Think of three organisms you'd like to use to make your own tree. Look at plants inside your house. Look outside your window. Find bugs outside in the park. Look up cool animals online. Once you've picked your organisms, follow the steps we went through to make your own tree. When you're done, use the online resources we provided to check your tree. It's okay if it's not perfect. Scientists don't always get it right. Be sure to send us your trees and have fun!